Okay, this is a perf a example of a perfectly valid URL that we could type into our browser. Okay, so HTTPS colon two forward slashes www.google.com and then here a colon AT forward slash question mark Q equals app plus engine. Okay, so what is all of this? So first thing we have is the protocol. Now the protocol is basically telling how are we going to communicate with the server. Now all websites run over the HTTP or the HTTPS protocol, so we don't even need to worry about this. The HTTPS is simply a secure version of the HTTP protocol. And like I said, it's just the kind of like the standard which we use to communicate between servers to request for websites, okay? So we don't really have to worry about this too much. Then we have the host or the domain name, which is essentially what server am I trying to, to reach, okay? So in this case, we're trying to reach google.com and behind this domain name, there is a, actually a IP address. So it's essentially saying to which IP address are we trying to access? Okay, then comes the port. Now, servers have all sorts of ports and at each port, there, there may be a given, a different service uh, running on that port. So the port by default to for web servers is the port 80. So we don't even need to type this when we're requesting a domain name or we're trying to send requests to a server because by default this is going to be 80. Okay. So even when we type in a domain name in our browser, the browser assumes it's port 80. So this is why we don't need to type it. Now, why did I put it here? Well, because when we're going to be developing our application, we will encounter this concept. So we will be using the port for two different things. One is to, to actually preview our application when we're developing it. And the second port that we're going to be using is to access all the, the user interface to see what's going on in our data store or our database, to see what's going on with our search index, to see what's going on with our task queues and all that. So we will encounter this concept. However, when we deploy our application into production, th this will be 80. So we don't have to worry that, you know, we will have some kind of strange port when we deploy our application online. The, the application will, uh, will use the port 80, okay? So, so don't worry that we're going to have some kind of, you know, weird domain name uh, with some kind of port at the end. Okay, so the next thing is the path. And now the path essentially tells where is the resource that we're looking for located at. So if we're looking for the homepage, well, it's normal that the path is just, you know, forward slash because we're just looking for the homepage. So usually the, the, the URL is pretty clean, so we don't have anything if we're requesting for the homepage. But imagine we were looking for a post in a blog. So this could be, you know, www.someblog.com forward slash posts forward slash and then the title of the post. So this forward slash post, forward slash title of the post could indicate that we are looking for some kind of post and then the title of the post. Okay, so that could be a perfectly valid path. So basically, it simply says, what are we looking for and, and where should it be? Okay, so we're sending a request to a path given in at a domain name. And the thing that we're looking for should be at that path. Okay. And then finally, query parameters. Okay, so, so this last bit here, here basically we're sending some custom parameters to the server to give it more specific indications on what we're looking for. Okay, so, so taking the previous example of a blog, imagine the path would be forward slash posts, and then we appended a query parameter of let's say ID equals to one, two, three. So essentially what we would be saying maybe here is, okay, we want to, we're requesting some post with ID one, two, three. So can you please serve it to me? Okay. So this is how query parameters work. They, they just send more specific instructions to our server so that it knows what we're actually looking for and, and it can customize, you know, the response according to what we're looking for. Or another example could be, you know, we're, we're looking at some kind of user profile. So if there's many users, well, how do we know which user we're looking for? So we could pass in maybe the user ID or the username into the query parameters to tell the server which user we are looking for. In this case, we're telling Google what our query is. So essentially, we'll, we are telling Google what we're searching for. So in this case, we are searching for App Engine. 
Okay, so, so this was, you know, the how a URL is built and what are its main components. The main thing we, we, are, we need to, to take out of this, this, this lecture is the path and the query parameters. We will be using this all the time. Because, as I said before, we are going to be building an application which responds to requests sent by users. And, and the way a, a user sends us a request is using this path and query parameters. We won't have to worry too much about the domain now because when we're developing on our local computer, we simply don't have a domain name. And then when we deploy our application online, we will have a domain name and we can optionally even buy a domain name, a custom domain name we want, which we will go over through all of that in the course. But for the time being, the majority of the course is going to focus from the path onwards, okay? So the path is going to be the most important concept by far in this course.